Okay, so today we are continuing our quest to find the fastest components. Now, today we will be testing Z690 versus Z790 again, but this time these two boards are DDR5. Okay, so these two boards, this one is the Z690i Unify, this one is the Z790 I edge. I bought these two boards specifically for this video for testing, brought to you by the supporters. Can't run the channel without you guys, thank you so much. All content on this channel is bought with our own money. No product samples, no sponsorships, only journalistic integrity. Now the reason why I selected these two boards specifically was because they are pretty much direct clones of each other. Now aside from the color, you probably can't tell them apart. But specification wise, there are a lot of differences here. Now this one, the Z690 is a Meg board. It's a Unify, right? Much more premium. It actually has a backplate, right? It also has Thunderbolt on it, which was, the other one doesn't have Thunderbolt. That was a big downer for me. I really, if, you, if you're going with an ITX board, it really needs Thunderbolt in 2022. If you ever decide to expand your capabilities whatsoever, you basically have to have Thunderbolt because you don't have any other slots here, obviously, right? Now, other than the uh, Thunderbolt and the backplate, the board is pretty much identical. Now you can see with the Z790, the VRM cooler is the exact same. It has a VRM fan in all the same spots, but yeah, no back plates. And the other key difference is this one has a 12 layer PCB. The Z690 has a 10 layer. Now, why do the board layer counts matter? Typically the board that has the more layers will overclock memory better. And that's not always the case. It depends on how much stuff they stuff in here, right? But basically the more layers it has, the more shielding they can put around the traces, the less noise, the better signal integrity, etc., etc. That's why you'll usually find very, very, very high extreme overclocking boards. Uh, even server boards, by the way, they will have 12, 14 layers on those things. Now, this one does not have Thunderbolt, though. Uh, they, they definitely stripped some things out to cheap it out. It's not a Meg board, it's an MPG board. The MPG is one kind of tier below the Megs, which is actually super frustrating. I really wish they kept it in the Meg lineup and made it really premium, but they didn't. This board is actually cheaper than the Z690 variant, so there is that. But for today, we will be focusing strictly on gaming kind of overclocking performance. So features of the boards aside, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this DDR5 kit here. I bought this one for the video as well. These are the uh, 7600 G skills. I'll leave affiliate links for all this stuff down below, by the way, in case you do wanna support the channel. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna take these memory sticks, we're gonna put them in both motherboards, the same kit, right? And then we're gonna take the CPU, the same one, and put them in both motherboards. Now I already have a pre-binned 13900K uh, that has the best memory controller out of the ones that I have, right? So we're gonna take that one, put it in both boards with the same kit of memory. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the same voltages and timings on both boards and just see if which one can clock higher. That's it. It's actually a super simple test. So this one here, we're gonna start with the Z790 because I haven't done this yet. So I'm not sure if the voltages are different than the Z690. I already know that the Z690 is probably gonna perform the exact same as my Unify X, the big one. Those ones are, gonna, those ones are pretty much identical. So I'm gonna do this one first, see if it's any different go as high as I possibly can on this board. Then I'm gonna take all of those same settings, apply them to that board, and then we'll see if, hey, if this one with those two extra layers, maybe it will get some better overclocks. Let's go find out. Okay, so we're gonna do the Z790i first. Now these sticks here, they're just like the stock ones that come out of the box, right? There's no aftermarket heat spreaders on them. So these do get quite hot i'm just gonna throw a fan on them like this just to even this doesn't do much you really need aftermarket heat spreaders to crank some voltage into these things but for now for our purposes the fan should work right it's, we're not doing 
we're not doing five hour long gaming sessions, right? So we're just gonna see if we can get it stable for the for now, right? Okay, so we just finished tuning the Z790i Edge and we're at uh, DDR5 8000 here and we finished three cycles, TM5 Absolute with no issues. Now I could not go any higher than 8000 with safe voltages on this motherboard. Basically all, all of these motherboards, well this one and the Unify X that I have before, like the, the, the big one over there, right, that one, um, they all kind of max out around the same range. Now, I'm not willing to go any higher on the voltages, right? So, I'm not saying this motherboard can't go higher with suicide voltages. I'm just saying that with the voltages that I'm comfortable using for daily gaming, I don't do no suicide shit here. For daily gaming, this one can do 8,000 but I still had to bin the CPU for it to get to 8,000, right? All my other CPUs only did about 7,800. So if you're just a gamer, this board won't actually give you any advantage over the Unify X, right? It's just you're, you're memory limited and then your memory controller limited on the actual CPU. The board itself doesn't have much to do with it, right? Now, again, I don't know what the max frequency is. Uh, we don't do that here. So we're just doing this quickly here. And no, it looks like it does not work, which is, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised by that. I legit thought it was going to. I'm going to try and mess around with the voltages to see if it's any different and try and stabilize this. But, uh, uh, not looking good so far. All right, so we just finished up here, and 7,800 worked fine on it, but I could not get 8,000 to validate for the life of me. So there is, there is something to that Z790, or, or I should say, there's 200 megahertz into it, right? This, this, the, the ITX board is pretty much identical to my Z690 Unify X. That one kind of caps out at uh, 7800 as well. So, what do I think about this? So, how do I feel about this? Hmm. I'm, I'm like, I'm like at a loss when it comes to these two boards specifically because no matter which one you choose, you're giving something up. And I don't like that feeling personally, right? Like with the Z, so with the Z690 here, you're gonna get 7800 and you're gonna get Thunderbolt, you got the backplate, you got the rigidity, you got all the good stuff, right? But if you get that one, you're not gonna get 8000. And are, are you gonna have anxiety over that 200 megahertz, right? Also, this board is cheaper. So, the, the, yeah, the conundrum is real for this one. So, assuming you're not going to be using suicide voltages, this one will get you that 8,000 on safe, normal, day-to-day -day voltages, right? Which is really nice, having that nice, clean 8,000 number, right? But, here's, okay, if I was uh, an aspiring creator or professional in any way, shape, or form, maybe I needed a travel PC where I could stream on the go, capture some video on the go. You need the Thunderbolt. You're going to need those Thunderbolt capture cards. You're going to need those Thunderbolt eGPUs, whatever. You're going to need Thunderbolt if you're a professional, right? And at the end of the day... The FPS difference between 7,800 and 8,000 is zero. Real, it's zero. Actually, very soon here, I will be doing another benchmark video on MDI versus ADI again because MDI does go a little further on Raptor Lake. So subscribe so you don't miss that one. But probably I'm going to go on a hunch here and say that, that the difference between even 7,200 and 8,000 might be like 1%, right? So the difference between 7,800 and 8,000, probably zero. So if you're an enthusiast and you never plan on doing anything professional ever in your entire life, then go for this one. And it's cheaper too, right? Why not? Cheaper, better performance. If you ever plan on doing anything ever with your platform, you're going to need the Thunderbolt to go for this one. Don't worry about that 200 megahertz FOMO.
Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the Z790 Edge. This motherboard can do 8,000 megahertz, and it also costs half as much as all of the other ones that can. So this is for those folk who uh, are hardware enthusiasts and who also value their dollar. And that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.